This is Robertson, about two hours south of Sydney in the gorgeous Southern Highlands. It really is a spectacular part of the world. They do a lot of things well down here, but they're particularly famous for potatoes, and they take their spuds seriously. How seriously? Well, they've got the big potato, for starters. The local sports team at the Spuddies, who play at Spud Park, and if you walk down one of the back roads, you're going to find this local potato stand, where you can try all kinds of varieties you've never even heard of. It's a really exciting thing for anyone who's into cooking. And the best place to discover potatoes, of course, is here at the Potato Farm. I'm about finding potatoes. Not there, a little bit further over. Ah, <laughs> oh, there we go. That's gold. That is a beautiful Robertson Kennebec potato. They're fantastic, really good for making chips. Actually, potatoes form the two main styles. You've got starchy ones and waxy ones. Now, your starchies are really good for making chips or roasting, while waxy potatoes are perfect for mash or making salads. Now, I want to find some waxy potatoes, and the reason is, if there's one recipe that everybody ought to master, it would have to be mashed potato, and I'm going to show you all the secrets. Oh, gold mine. Look at this. Look at this. You know, of all the potatoes you could use to make mash, the very best of them is a funny little red thing called an Otway Red. They're beautiful, fine skinned, really creamy interior. But if you can't get them, well, you can use any other waxy potato. I like splinters and nicolas, and even colobans can work quite well. But the really important part is how do you cook them? Most people, when they want to make mash, are going to boil or steam their potatoes. But for the best results, you want to roast them. In the camp oven, these are going to need maybe about an hour and a half to cook. Or at home, you could use your regular oven at 200 degrees for about the same amount of time. That's oh, perfect, beautifully softened. So, set those aside, and then we've got to mash them. For the very best results, what you want to do is take a potato, split it in two, and press the flesh through a fine sieve. That is going to give you the finest, silkiest, smoothest, and best quality mash. And then there's the stuff you put with the potato to turn it into mash. Now, some French chefs joke that uh, mashed potato is a dairy product. Look, it's funny, but it's actually kind of true, too. But don't use milk. Milk's a really bad choice. You want it richer than that. Butter is essential, and so is cream. The rule of thumb is, for every five parts of potato, you want one part of unsalted butter and a little bit less than one part of cream. Make sure the cream's hot and beat it all together. Now, the last thing you need to do, of course, is to season your mash. You will need some salt and probably a fraction more than you might have expected. It'll carry it. And as for pepper, you're not allowed to use black pepper. It's forbidden. I always reckon it looks like bugs fell in the mix. So, white pepper, if you need to have pepper at all, that'll be perfect. There you have it. That's mashed potato, real mashed potato. Oh, the flavor's great. It's rich, it's creamy, just the right amount of seasoning. I love this recipe because everyone's going to dig it. And you can put it with pretty much anything, you know, sausages, steak, fish, it's pretty universal. So there you go. Handful of ingredients, handful of steps, and you have mastered the mash.